Hey guys, Woods Farm here, just back out in the shop. Today we're gonna to be starting a brand new video series. We're gonna be building a couple of propane oxygen machine gun simulators to be used in our replica SD KFZ 222 armored scale car that you can see behind me. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around and check it out. Okay, so for part of our other project that we have on the go, Project 222, that's a replica of the SDKFZ 222 armored scale car that you see behind me. Uh, for that project, we are eventually going to need a simulator, something to simulate machine gun fire for the MG34 and the 20mm autocannon that were, was mounted in this vehicle. So we're decided to go ahead and do this with gas. Um, a propane oxygen system. There's nothing new about this uh, style of machine gun simulator. They've been around for a long time, but this is the first time I've ever built one. Uh, we're gonna take you right through the prototype process and right to into the finished product that will eventually get uh, mounted into our vehicle. Okay, so for this project, we're gonna need, ultimately we're gonna need uh, an eight millimeter MG34 and the 20, millimeter cannon so there's going to be two separate gas guns um, that we want both going to be mounted into the turret of the 222 currently my idea is to use uh, small propane and oxygen cylinders and what i hopefully want to do is just have uh, two cylinders mounted in the vehicle so there's only going to be one propane tank and one oxygen tank and these are going to feed, are going to tee off and feed both of the guns. If that turns out not to be sufficient um, and we have to separate the gas systems for each individual gun, we'll do that. But to save space in the crew compartment, I want to try to get away with uh, just two tanks. And the current idea is to just use these uh, smaller tanks. Um, you can also get these for oxygen. Now, because these uh, machine guns are going to be mounted in our vehicle, we're not too concerned with how the uh, receiver looks. We're more concerned with the barrels. So part of the prototype, we're just going to start with a very basic barrel for both guns. But later down the road, we are going to build uh, a shroud and muzzle brakes uh, and sights and all that to make the barrels look correct. The receivers on the back end... Um, are just going to end up being boxes that hold all the components for the gas system. So the heart of the gas gun system is the firing chamber. Um, we're going to try a couple of different ideas for this um, using some pipe fittings. We're also going to try a brass firing chamber and we may even do one out of uh, mild steel. The basic firing chamber um, is essentially we're going to start with a half inch bore That'll more or less go through the complete chamber. One end is going to be tapped and threaded for a spark plug. That's our spark plug. And this is going to be a 1.25 by 14 mil. That's a very common spark plug. The next part of the firing chamber is we're going to have to drill in gas ports. So there's going to be two gas ports, one supplying oxygen and the other supplying propane. These are just going to be uh, tapped out at probably quarter inch national pipe thread for the fittings for the gas system. And then the, the other end, the barrel end, we're going to have, we have a few different ideas of how we're going to uh, attach the barrel, um, but it will eventually be th more than likely threaded as well probably for half inch, uh, you know, schedule 40 pipe, or maybe a three eighths fitting for some copper. Um, and that's going to make up the barrel that goes out into the, to the end of the gun. So the next part of the system is supplying uh, the gases into the firing chamber. Uh, to do that, we're going to have to have electronically controlled uh, solenoid valves that are controlled by electronic signal to open and close and this will turn on turn on and off the gas flow into the firing chamber so each uh more than likely we're going to have one solenoid 
per gas line. However, we might experiment with mixing the gases first and just having one solenoid and only one gas port. We're going to play around with that in the prototype stage. None of this is uh, new. Uh, this idea has been around for a long time. Um, it's been done in the reenactment community to make simulators for various machine guns. There is a ton of information online. There's a lot of resources out there. You can see this is a lot of stuff I printed off just to give us kind of a starting point. There are a lot of good diagrams and information on the internet. So to make this work, there's going to be a circuit control board um, that is going to uh, control the pulse to open and close the solenoids and make the spark plug fire. There's also going to be an ignition coil that is powering the spark plug. And that is also controlled through the coil or through the, uh, the computer circuit board. The other part of the system is fairly straightforward. You have an ignition coil and that is going to give the power to the spark plug to make the spark in the chamber. And this is going to be controlled by a circuit board. This is going to be a 12 volt system. Um, pretty easy. It'll be able to run off either, either a battery or the vehicle power, the uh, 12 volt battery in the vehicle itself. So that's easy. Uh, nothing really complicated about the ignition coil. The main problem we're going to have is figuring out the ratios of gas, um, also making the firing chamber in the right dimensions, uh, also setting up the solenoids, so that all works. I've got a few ideas of how to get the circuit board. Um, there are maybe a few options on Amazon that may work. Uh, if that doesn't work, there are a few sources out there where you can actually buy a programmed uh, circuit board that'll work and provide you with the right pulse to open and close the solenoids and fire the spark plug. Okay, so the very first thing we're, we started to do on this project is accumulate supplies. Um, and this has turned out to be pretty expensive. Um, I'm hoping a lot of this stuff is going to be used in multiple guns. Uh, especially a lot of the tooling. Um, we've got things like uh, tap and dies that we need. Um, this is the 14 by 1.25 that we needed for the spark plug. So you need to buy drill bits, taps and dies, all that kind of tooling uh, to do this. And then you need to start buying supplies. Uh, there is a lot of brass fittings, um, copper line. Um, we've got gauges and regulators. So it can add up. There's a lot of electronic uh, stuff that we need to use. Uh, these are the circuit boards that I got off of Amazon. I'm not confident that these are going to work, but we're going to attempt to start with this. Uh, another thing are the uh, solenoids, the 12 volt solenoid to control the gas flow. So a lot of this stuff adds up quick, but like I said, I'm hoping to get be able to build at least two or three guns out of all these different supplies. Okay, so our very first prototype, we're just going to use some, make it very crude and we're going to use some pipe fittings for the firing chamber. Uh, this is stuff that's really readily available and you probably could put together one of these guns and just use uh, pipe fittings. We're going to use it for our first prototype and then I think we're going to move on to a brass firing chamber. That'll come in a later video. So before I go ahead and tap this for the gas fittings and the spark plug, I'm going to work on some gas jets. Um, some of the information I found online uh, suggested that sort of like a jet system here um, probably improves how it works. Instead of just using a one quarter or a one eighth uh, pipe that goes right in, it actually steps down, kind of uh, meters the gas flow, um, very much like what you'd see in like a carburetor or, you know, like think fuel injection. Um, you get that kind of fine spray of gas. So we're going to build our own gas jets. I've got some very small drill bits. Um, hopefully this goes okay. These are pretty small. We've got 1 16th and 5 64s to make the gas jets. The majority of the gas fittings are all going to be based on one quarter inch uh, national pipe thread. So the idea is I need to make one of these brass fittings into a gas jet. And then that will get threaded into our firing chamber. So let's go ahead and start that. So trying to make things as simple as possible, um, this these uh, quarter inch 
um, brass national pipe thread fittings. Very close. This is just a basic 3 8 bolt, and that may work. Um, to tap out a 3 8 by 16 uh, coarse thread, you're supposed to drill a 5 16 hole. Uh, I measured one of these. It's a little over 5 16 but I think there's enough material in there to cut a thread with that uh, tap. And uh, if we thread this, then we can create a gas jet out of this 3 8 bolt and thread it in there. So that's what we're going to try. Okay, guys, I'm just tapping out that fitting to accept the bolt. And I didn't actually have to drill it out, and there was enough material to get a good thread. So then I took the bolt and... We drilled it out. I went in about, I don't know, half an inch or so. And then we cut it off. Now you could do this with a regular drill and a hacksaw. Okay, there's our tiny gas jet. Worked pretty good. Uh, you could vary the size of this hole um, for less gas or more gas. Um, I actually put a little slit in it so you can use a screwdriver to put it in there. We will uh, add some thread sealer to this. Um, but that's pretty straightforward. You could do this with a drill, uh, with a hand drill if you don't have a drill press. Um, a hacksaw um, is pretty basic. So the next step is to uh, tap the firing chamber to receive this fitting. Uh, there's going to be two of these uh, at the end of the day. We may just try with one and pre-mix the gas, and then we'll go with a second uh, gas fitting, one for propane, one for oxygen separately. Okay, now I'm tapping out the firing chamber. Uh, that's a one-quarter national pipe thread. And you can see that fitting threads in there now. Okay, this is the end of the firing chamber, the cap, and I'm drilling this out and tapping it for the spark plug. And there you go, we got a spark plug. Okay guys, that's the basic uh, setup right there. You've got the barrel and we've got the firing chamber. It's got the spark plug. We're gonna try uh, one gas port pre-mixing the gas, and then I've got it already uh, pre-drilled uh, and tapped for another uh, gas jet, another port, if we wanna have the propane and oxygen come in separately. I don't have all of the components I need to properly rig up the solenoids uh, and rig up the gas line uh, into the chamber. I'm waiting on some fittings that are coming from Amazon. In the meantime, I'm going to tinker on the electrical part of things and try to uh, rig up the firing system. Okay, this is the uh, delay relay timer uh, circuit board that I got off of Amazon. It was only uh, like 12 bucks. I'm not confident we can get this to work, but I'm going to try. Um, found a wiring diagram. We're going to get hooked up to a 12-volt power source. We're going to program it. And we're going to see if we can get a switch hooked up and uh, have a switch that activates the cycle. This board has uh, five, sorry, seven modes. I'm still learning how to program it. Uh, hold the set button up and down and you can change the modes. I believe uh, program five is going to be the best mode for us to use. It runs through a cycle, an open and closed cycle that you can put on an infinite loop. You can set the time between that it's the circuits open, the time the circuits closed, and like I said, you can put as many uh, loops in there as you want, right up to infinite, and it's set off by a trigger. So we're going to go with mode five. 
So I have it open for a tenth of a second. The closed is less than tenth of a second. I might actually change that. Try it down. Yeah. And then loop, I believe the three, the, the four dash lines means that it's set infinite. Okay, I took a little bit of experimenting. I didn't fully understand the wiring diagram on the other side. But essentially there's two power feeds. You've got power to control the circuit board, the switching, and then you've got a relay that can, and you have a separate power in and out in a ground for that. So I set it up on a 10, uh, 10 cycle loop. You hit the button. Ten cycles. I'm going to change the program settings on this just a little bit. So I sped up the timing, put it on an infinite loop, and it should trigger on and off with the trigger. There we go. So I should be able to use this circuit to uh, trigger the solenoid and the spark plug in the ignition system. It's not perfect. It would be better if you were holding the button down. Uh, it's a two trigger system. But for now, as a starting point, we'll go with this. Uh, I definitely am going to buy the actual circuit board that a guy's making for this setup. Uh, it'll be a lot better, but this will be a good starting point for the prototype. Just going to run another test. Now I have it actually connected to the solenoid. And instead of propane or oxygen, I just have it set up to compressed air. So this should pulse and give us a burst of compressed air. We're going to power it up and see if it'll run off the trigger. Okay, so we got the button. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Um, we've got a good start to the prototype for the firing chamber and the barrel. I created those gas jets, and we've got the spark plug threaded into the uh, firing chamber. Also got time to experiment and work on the circuit board, programming it to get the pulse that will open and close the solenoid and also activate the spark. I'm still waiting on some parts to complete the gas delivery system for the propane and the oxygen. So when those parts come in, I'm going to continue working on the build. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And if you're interested in seeing uh, further videos for this project, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, thanks for watching.